We don't have to have heart attacks, we don't have to have strokes, we don't have to get demented, and yes, we can win the war on cancer. We have the information right now in the studies that show that a body is protective against cancer. We can make these choices and have better health than ever before possible in human history. Ciao, it's Sophia and you're a vegan watching Dr. Farman's Health Lessons. Dr. Joel Farman is an American medical doctor who has authored numerous New York Times best-selling books. His works include Eat to Live, Its Successor Eat to Health, Super Immunity and The End of Dieting. Furman coined the word nutritarian to describe his recommended diet, which concentrates on eating the most micronutrient-rich foods. As a family physician, he specializes in preventing and reversing disease through nutritional and natural methods. In this video, I'll be sharing his top 10 health lessons. So, let's check them out. I didn't decide I was going, not being, going to be a regular doctor, a nutritional doctor. I didn't decide like that. Because I, I already had an enthusiastic mission or you could say passion for, for nutritional excellence, a passion for what nutrition could do to the human body, a passion for the fact that Americans don't need to suffer and die needlessly from malnutrition. And so I really saw that and it, that drove me to want to attend medical school to have oh. the most strong or the strongest effect on people I could have. So I went to medical school already with that determination and desire to become a physician who specialized in nutritional therapeutics. Cutting back on calories is not the answer to successful weight loss and successful health. Exercising more doesn't work. You have to increase the, the quality of what you eat, not just reduce the quantity. Because if you try to reduce the quantity without increasing the quality, you're going to be left with food cravings and toxic addictions and, and not feeling well unless you overeat food. In other words, you're eating larger amounts of food, not smaller amounts. Sure, big salads, but cook vegetable dishes, vegetable bean soups, sorbets, desserts, breakfast, oatmeal, burgers made with you know, beans and mushrooms. We have all types of high-nutrient foods. And the point is, the more what I'm saying is, the more of these high nutrient foods like green vegetables and salads you eat, the easier it is to lose weight by eating. So you eat more food to lose more weight. You don't try to eat thimble sized portions of food and count calories. You know, the conventional media and conventional health authorities tell people we want to speed up our metabolic rate so we can eat more food and not get fat. And they're going to give you all these things to speed up your metabolic rate. Isn't that what you've heard? Isn't that what's true? And I'm saying that's the, that's the wrong way of thinking of it because the faster your metabolic rate, the faster you're aging yourself and the shorter in your lifespan. What we really want to do is we want to slow down our metabolic rate. We want to slow down our metabolic rate so we can age slower, so we can eat less and not get too thin. Did you follow that? Completely opposite of what people have taught. One of my basic equation, the basic formula, health equation, I call it, is H equals N over C. That means your healthy life expectancy how long are you going to live, the quality of your life in your later years, is proportional to the micronutrient per calorie density of your diet. H equals N over C. Predicts whether you're going to get pneumonia in later life, whether you're going to get cancer. That means we strive for a long life. The most simple, basic information you have to leave here with is you have to eat a diet with more micronutrients but less calories. And the basis of my work and my contribution to the field of science, of health science, is that I've shown and documented and tested and proven and published in the medical scientific literature that as a person eats a diet with a better micronutrient quality, their perception of hunger changes, they require less calories, and they don't want to eat as much food. This is about making your life more pleasurable, making your life happier, giving you more opportunity in life, giving the opportunity to be happy in life, taking away your possibility of having medical tragedies. This is making the, the food actually improving your taste as you improve your health. This is about giving the opportunity. So I'm not, I just want to make sure that Good. people don't I'm think glad you this clarified. is just, a, just about like, deprivation. deprivation <laughs> yeah. Where in reality, their addictions are depriving themselves of having a full physically active, emotionally active, and pleasurable life, including with food, too. Yes. And I think that they're, I, I hate this concept where people say, you know, I'd rather like just die 20 years longer and enjoy my life more. You're not enjoying your life more. <laughs> You're just dying 20 years younger. <laughs> Whether it's desserts, main dishes, salads, or soups, I'm claiming that healthy food can taste better and then emotion than you know, what you're eating before. Your taste buds sure adjust to the, not eating so many things with a high degree of sugar in them and all that sweets. Your taste buds actually get stronger. But you know what? People who become nutritarians reap the benefits. They don't need blood pressure medications. They don't have to worry about even getting heart attacks. They don't have to be on cholesterol-lowering drugs or be diabetic. 
but, they, but emotionally and intellectually, you know you're eating good tasting food that's good for you too. So it makes you feel, so you just feel better and have a better quality life. There's, there's some factors in meat itself that can accelerate an earlier death. And one, of the, one factor, we can talk about many of those, one factor is called IGF-1, or insulin-like growth factor 1, which is a growth-promoting hormone that in excess, if that hormone is driven too high, it can promote growth, cell growth. And we don't want to promote cell growth as adults. For example, a recent study followed 6,000 people for 18 years. And they found that those in the highest grouping of meat consumption, which was about 30% of calories from animal products in general. And that's the approximate amount of animal products Americans are eating right now, is about 30%. Mm -hmm. So in that grouping, between the 50 and 65 age range, followed for 18 years, so that means they went into their 70s, they were followed these people in the 70s, they had a four-fold increased risk of cancer and a 75% increased risk of early, of early death compared to those who were eating less than um, eating about 7.5% or less of animal products. So 7.5% or less compared to 30% or more. Difference in death rate, about 400%. You know, we're talking about tremendous difference in death rate. And we're seeing that not in one study, but in multiple studies, whether it's re whether they're studying cancer, whether they're studying heart disease. The bottom line is that the epidemiologic evidence and the clinical evidence shows that diets that are higher in animal products accelerate earlier death. And we put that into a into the societal, you know, um, where we are today in the society, where the most popular diets like the paleo diet, the Atkins diet, the Ducan diet, the South Beach diet, these diets don't eat, have 30% of calories from animal products. They're up to like 40 to 70%. They're even higher in animal products. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're talking here about that, that I, I would say that there's no controversy in the nutritional science community among non-biased nutritional researchers that Americans have to eat dramatically less amount of animal products. There might be a controversy whether, you know, whether a small amount is, is good or bad or how much that small amount that's safe. But we know that Americans are eating 30% and they have to drop that by a huge amount. We know for a fact that eating processed and highly refined carbohydrates like sugar and white flour are not just causing weight gain and diabetes, but they cause cancer. Mm -hmm. We know when you eat a bagel, when you eat ripe bread, ripe bread when you're eating that cookie, that, ba that um, cake, you're eating cancer-causing food. You might just be snorting cocaine. They're dangerous foods. You know? And we know that Americans are eating way not enough natural plant produce, whole natural plant foods. When you eat a diet that doesn't achieve micronutrient adequacy, you build up metabolic waste products in your tissues. And those waste products, you become addicted to them like there are cigarettes or cocaine or, or caffeine and you feel ill when you're not digesting food and you feel fatigued and shaky and weak and mentally you feel confused or shaky and you have to eat food again to feel better and when you eat what it takes that, all, takes that away and that's something unique in the scientific literature because I'm claiming that the medical the medical and science books describing hunger are wrong what they're describing, those symptoms they're describing are not hunger they're withdrawal symptoms from an unhealthy diet. Because in my 25 years of medical practice, I've observed thousands of people who change their diet to a healthy diet, lose those so-called hunger symptoms, disappear. And they get back in touch with what I call true hunger that is felt in their neck and upper part of their chest in this area of the body, which then directs you to the exact amount of calorie. And it makes food taste great. It's accompanied by a dramatic enhancement in taste sensation and salivation and a sensation in your neck and throat. The point I'm making is that is that the medical doctors and the scientists are studying unhealthy people eating an unhealthy disease-causing diet. So what they're describing, recording, and studying isn't health, it's ill health. So they don't have the opportunity to observe people in good health and observe what happens to people when they eat healthy. For example, when people eat healthy, their white blood cell counts drop out of the so-called normal range into a range that most people would consider too low. But I see it happen to all these people who eat healthy. There. So, so in other words, even interpreting the blood tests are different for a person with a nutritarian diet because they don't fit the normal blood test because they're healthier. Like, for example, the white blood cell counts, when you have less inflammation and lower risk of cancer, your white blood cell counts get lower. But it's not going to be in the mid, but it's going to come back abnormal on your blood test, abnormally too low. New science shows that if we eat too many animal products, the increased protein, concentrated protein, raises a hormone called IGF-1 that can promote breast cancer, prostate cancer, and the bacteria in the digestive tract change in response to either a meat-based or a sugar-based diet. Too much sweets, too much meat in your diet. You grow certain bacteria that actually create inflammation and weight gain and promote heart disease. So it's, there's a whole bunch of different mechanisms 
via which an excellent diet promotes health, and you could say a suboptimal diet promotes disease. Look around. See if you all look the same. You're not Cleons or robots. We're all different. People have different metabolic rates. They have different genetics. And clearly, we have to adjust the nutrient per calorie density of our diet to meet our individual need for calories. And some people can do well with a higher amount of calories, and some people can do well with a more liberal use of starch in their diet. But many people can't. Many people have slower metabolic rates and who are naturally heavier, and they're not going to adequately get to their ideal weight, or at which is slim. They're not going to keep and they're not going to maintain the best weight and the best have the best chance for longevity with a starch-centered diet. So clearly, my, and I think that I must have thousands of people who were on vegetarian diets, which were starch-centered and didn't do as well, their cholesterol didn't drop, and their weight didn't go down as successfully as when they took their diet up another notch. So clearly, this is just math. The math for you has to be, is if your nutrient needs want to be met with the amount of calories you need to sustain yourself, at a light adult, at an ideal adult weight. So if you think that you're, if you're overweight and you're not adequately, and your, and your level of exercise you can do, and your metabolic rate doesn't have you be thin, then you can increase, then you should be watching the starch content of your diet. And the other issue, of course, is that there's some type of preference to use starches like potatoes and rice over fresh fruit or nuts or seeds or avocados from a fear of fat. And I don't think that fear is held up in the scientific literature. As a matter of fact, the opposite is true. That a diet with that, we don't have to be so fearful of these healthy plant fats found in avocado and nuts and seeds. And I'd rather see a person have a little more fat in their diet in the form of avocado and nuts and seeds and not be so afraid of fruit. Because in doing so, you're increasing the nutrient density of your diet. And we, get be we see large beneficial effects on antioxidant scores and on, and on lipid scores and on CRPs, actually, too. So there is some benefit, and there's, there's room for differences, and there's also room for what's best for each individual. And clearly, I don't tell people that they have to only eat one small serving of starch a day. That was written in my book, Eat to Live, because that book was designed for people who were overweight. For physically active people who are out there working in the fields, and, and they're naturally thin, and I don't eat just one serving of starch a day either. I could, so I'm not restricting sweet potato and butternut and acorn squash and corn on the cob and peas and those starchy vegetables that are wholesome for people who are slim and physically active. That water runs off the waterfall and hits a rock. And after 20,000 years, the rock breaks in two. But the rock didn't age. It got hit by water day after day for 20,000 years. When you develop the problems that most Americans get, Forget those problems because day after day you put stresses on your tissues from eating the wrong foods that we shouldn't be eating, from living a diet style and a lifestyle of stresses that, that impact you negatively day after day, year after year. This is not the natural consequence of aging. We don't have to have heart attacks, we don't have to have strokes, we don't have to get demented, and yes, we can win the war on cancer. We have the information right now in the studies that show that, we can, that a body is protective against cancer. We can make these choices and have better health than ever before possible in human history. Those are Dr. Farman's health lessons. Thank you so much for vegan watching. Remember to rate, comment and subscribe and you'll see me in the next video. And you're able to enjoy your life and just do the things you want to do without fear, without you know, things holding you back and you just have fun.